Oh, it's been a long, long time, so it's a, it's a blessing to be, to be back. Um, you know, just on, on blessings, one of the things that um, just struck me as we, we started as, it was a, as uh, Pastor James was, was praying there, just the, the focus on thanking the Lord at the, at the start is such, a, such an encouragement to, to remind ourselves to, to be thankful for all that God is doing, that all is, as, that God has done, because um, you know it's so easy to focus on what's not going well and to focus on the the trials and the heartaches that all of us go through and all of us have. But again, as I said, it's a it's a blessing and a reminder for us to focus on God's blessings, and that goes along with our scripture reading today. If you'd like to turn there where we were, where Brother Keith read already in Genesis chapter 12. I just want to point out one of the one of the verses there that that Keith read, and it's Genesis chapter twelve, verse number two. If you have a look there, the Bible says, "And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great." and thou shalt be a a blessing. Of course, this is the word of the Lord to Abram. And God promised Abram that he said there in verse 2, I will will bless thee. I will bless thee. And you know the book of Genesis, we're going to look at a little bit this morning. Really, so much of the book of Genesis is a family story. It's the story of one family of that man Abraham, Abraham and his family. Abraham, his son Isaac, his son Jacob, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel. So a lot of it, if we look at it, is a, is a family story. And like any family, there are, there are ups and there are downs. There are times of great victory. There are times of trials. There is pain. There's joy. There's life. There's death. There's ups and downs. So you see that all throughout um, book of Genesis as we look at this man Abraham and his family and yet despite all the ups and downs in Abraham's life God had promised him he said I'll bless thee I will bless thee I'd like you to look at the very end of Abraham's life we've turned to one more verse here Genesis chapter 24 verse number one I want you to see an interesting <clears throat> fulfillment of this promise that God had Promised to Abraham, I will bless thee. Look in chapter 24, verse 1. This is towards the end of Abraham's, getting towards the end of Abraham's life. And the Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And look at the last phrase. It says, And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. In all things. That's a very strong statement that's a very powerful statement that the lord would say it's very definitive that the lord would say the bible says the lord had blessed abraham in all things because you know when we think of blessings if someone was to ask you do you have a blessing you could share do you know what we think about generally good news things that have gone well in our in our lives maybe something that got, a prayer that god answered the way we would have wanted him to answer. I was praying for God to give me this, and he gave me this. I was praying for um, an, an, an answer, God could give me direction, and he gave me this direction. And they are, they are blessings, they are answered prayers. That's what we tend to think about blessings. So someone like Abraham, that God says he has been blessed. What did it say? The Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. If we're just to consider blessings as those good things that that we think are good, that are happy times, joyous times, victorious times, if we're just to focus on on that and think that's what blessings are, we would think that Abraham must have had such such an easy life, such a wonderful life. If God had blessed him in all things, you would think, did he have any trials? Did he have any struggles in life? He was just blessed day after day after day. That's what the Bible says, that, the, that he was blessed in all things. But of course we know that the truth is that God did bless him in all things. 
But that doesn't mean that he had a life without trials. You know, we know that the, the character of God, that God is good. God is good in his character. So God is good all the time. God is always right. God's plan for me and for all of us is always the best plan for our lives. It is always the best plan for this moment, this situation that I'm facing. What God wants me to do is always the best, even if it's not maybe what I would like to do. So God was good. You can always trust God. You know, even when we think that God has forgotten us, you're going through a, a trial, you're going through a hard time in life, and you're wondering, where is, where is God? Has God forgotten me? You know, you can rest on the, the truth, the knowledge of God's word, knowing the promise that the Lord has said to those who are um, his people, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You can know that he knows what's going on and he, he, has, a, he has a plan and his ways in whatever situation we're going through is always the best. So the Lord blessed Abraham in all things because God is good. God was good to Abraham. You see, our often I think our problem, often st- a lot of the problems we have in our life can stem from the fact that we don't always see God's blessings in our life. God is working in our life and we don't, we don't see how he's blessing us. We look at the things that are going wrong and we look at the um, things that are uh, uncomfortable and unsettling and we think well I don't want that in my life I don't I wish I wasn't going through this I wish this wasn't happening and we're focused on the the things that we don't like and the things that are upsetting rather than looking at well you know maybe God is working through this maybe God is is blessing me through this so if you're taking notes and you want a title from a message today it's called seeing God's blessings seeing God's blessings. We're looking at seeing the blessings of God. I want to look through the life of Abraham and see those, those bless, some of those blessings that Abraham had in his life. And I want to see if we can see maybe some blessings in our life that we wouldn't naturally maybe in our flesh look towards and, and identify. Let's have a look at some of these. Number one, So back in Genesis chapter 12, the first blessing we can see in our life, number one is that there is blessing in God's calling. There is blessing in God's calling. That is the calling of God. Look at our text verse today again, Genesis chapter 12, verse number one. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. So we can look at this, and maybe if you're familiar with reading the Bible, you, you know the story, and we tend to look at things with the benefit of hindsight. And we know how, what a blessing that was that Ab- God chose Abraham and chose to have a relationship with him. God called Abraham out of the land that he was in, out of the land of his father, so that he could have a, a tremendous walk with, with the so that Abraham could have a tremendous walk with the Lord. Abraham experienced a real-life personal relationship with God. We can talk a lot about having a personal relationship with the Lord, but Abraham had that in real life. He really and truly, he talked with God, he walked with God, he poured out his heart to the Lord, he followed the Lord. So we can see the blessing in Abraham's life because we have the benefit of hindsight. We see what became of all of that because the Lord has blessed us by putting it down in Scripture and telling us all about it. But I want to try and 
try and put yourself in Abraham's situation without the benefit of hindsight and look for the blessing in, in the calling of God. Here is a, a 75-year-old man being called by the Lord to leave everything behind, to, believe the, to leave the place where he was, to leave his father's home and to go to a place where God hadn't told him yet where that was to be. So 75 years old, I think he has... He is, set, he is settled. He's lived a, a long life. He's got a lot more to go, but he has lived a long life. He's settled. And God says, it's okay, get up. I want you to go to somewhere else, and I'm not going to tell you where it goes. If that was, if that was you and I, we'd be like, oh, thank you, Lord, for the blessing. <laughs> Maybe not. We'd be like, are you sure, God? I, I, I'm settled here. I have, I have my family. I have my job. I have... All of this is going on. I've I've worked hard, and I've I'm I'm set. it's time for me to kind of settle. And can I not like kind of stop this whole walk by faith thing? Abraham, he was called to literally to to move out of his comfort zone. God is making life uncomfortable for him. He's telling him to go somewhere where he hasn't been before, and he's not going to tell him where it is. Yes, until he walks with him and follows him. You know, if Abraham was a kind of man that got stressed, this certainly would have been time for him to be stressed. <laughs> like, Lord, what are you doing? Where are you sending me? Why me? Why now? And it wasn't just Abraham on his own. Look at the next verse, verse 5. The Bible said, And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they come. They came. So Abraham wasn't, wasn't a young single guy ready to travel the world. He, had, he, was, he was 75, he was married. He had commitments. It wasn't just Abraham that needed to have the faith to walk with the Lord. I wonder what was Sarah's reaction. She follows him. She goes with him. You know, what a, what a time of turmoil in their life. What a time of stre potential stress in their life at, at that age. Is, is that what it was? You see, if we could easily focus, if that was us going through, if you're focused just on the earthly, just on the fact that I have my life, I have my home, I have my family, my job, and God somehow wants to disturb all that and uproot me and do something different with me. If we're just focused on the earthly, we're like, this is so tough, this is so unsettling, this is so hard. But that wasn't what this was. Remember, God is good. This was the blessing of God in Abraham's life. This was the, the Lord would have that the Lord would choose Abraham. God chose him to have a relationship with him, to call him out from that land, to bring him to the promised land, eventually through his, his descent, to give him great promises that would come through his descendants, through his son Isaac, onto Jacob. Uh, who God renamed Israel and his 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel, that God would have a relationship with Abraham that would want him to have special blessings. That was the blessing of God in Abraham's life. It's easy for us to see it because we look back and we God has spelled it out for us. But you know, we can remember that it was a blessing in Abraham's life at the time, even though he may not have seen it all. You know, the Lord gave him the promise of land, descendants, physical and spiritual blessings. You know, though, he was 75 when God called him out of that land of Haran. God had a hundred more years 
for Abraham to walk with the Lord. You know, what if Abraham had said, this is too much, this is too stressful, this is too, I, I'm too far gone, I'm too far down the road in life. God, you, you, you're mistaken. Get someone younger, get someone different than me. What he would have missed out on. You see, God had those blessings. The Lord had that that walk, that relationship with Abraham, with the Lord for Abraham. Because God is good. So if we're to see the blessings of God in our life, Remember that there is a blessing in the calling of God. You know, any call of God, the very fact that the creator of this world would want to speak to you and I, that is a blessing. He didn't just create you and let you wander off and have to work out life yourself. The fact that he would speak to you through the the words of the, the pages of his book, the Bible, that is a that is a blessing. The fact that he would, if you if you're born again, if you're saved, he would uh, dwell in you. His Holy Spirit would dwell in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and that he would speak to you and guide you into all truth. You know, what a blessing! The call of God is a blessing in our life. You know the call of the Lord to every one of us to salvation is a blessing that some people don't see as a blessing. You know, because it can unsettle. You know, when when I heard the gospel for the first time, um, it was about six months before I got saved, or more than, a bit more than six months before I got saved, so over 25 years, you know, that was very unsettling. That was very upsetting. He said, why was the, the gospel upsetting? Because it, when I realized I had a decision to make, You know, I always thought being raised in religion, I always assumed that I believed, I always believed the Bible, but I always assumed that what has been taught was the Bible. It was only when I sat down and I compared the words of Scripture to the words of the Catechism, and I compared and I said, well, these are not the same. That was unsettling, and even more so when I realized that I knew the Bible was true, and I knew the Bible said that I, I was on my way to hell. I didn't look and say, that's a blessing. I was, I was in turmoil for months because I knew that the Bible said I was a sinner. I knew the Bible said I was going to hell. I knew before I got saved for Probably a month before I got saved, I knew each night, I knew that if I died in my sleep, I knew I would wake up in hell. But I still didn't get saved because I had the turmoil and the fear of what will people think? What will people think of me if I turn my back on religion and go with the the scripture, what the Bible says, that salvation is a free gift, for by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I was, I was in turmoil. It was, um, it was one of the most, or it was the most stressful time of my life. I was doing my, the finals of my degree in college at the time, and I had this going on in my life where I was fearful of hell, but more fearful of what people would think and. Uh, weighing it all up and down, and this was God's call. This was God. This was God's blessing. God offering me eternal life. God offering me salvation, giving me that opportunity, and His His mercy. Day after day after day, I didn't die in my sleep. I didn't wake up in hell. And the next day, I still didn't get saved. And it went on another day, and I didn't die in my sleep, and I didn't wake up in hell. Day after day after day, until finally, I. Finally, I, when I got to the stage where the, the fear of hell was more than my fear of what people thought, finally I said, Lord, okay, I'm going with your Bible. I'm going with the truth of the gospel. I'm going to trust you as my Savior. So I asked the Lord to save me on the, 
17th, 17th of May, 1999. And now I can look back and say, what a blessing that was. The, not just one blessing, day after day after day of blessing of God giving me the gospel of God, speaking to me and giving me opportunities. That is the blessing of the call of God. You know, if you, if you come here and you don't know for sure that you're going to be in heaven when you die. You know, when Pastor James or Brother Josh comes up and they preach or someone else preaches and maybe they preach the gospel, Maybe they preach on hell and the, the judgment of God and, you know, maybe you feel uncomfortable. That is the blessing of God. God wants you to be uncomfortable enough that you realize, I need to get saved. God is trying to provoke you to um, prod you a little bit to, to wake up and realize, you know what? I've never trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Yeah, maybe I've been to church all my life. Maybe I've uh, been here a while, maybe I've been around Christians and I can talk Christianity, but I've never called on the Lord Jesus Christ to save me. You want, you have the blessing of being here today. You have the blessing of hearing the gospel today. That's God's blessing, that's God's mercy, but God doesn't promise tomorrow. You know, make today the day you call on Jesus Christ to be your Savior. You have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'd encourage you, I'd urge you to get saved today. You see, the, the call of God on all of us is a blessing that we might not see at that time. You know, the Lord's call to, to go. The Lord calls all of us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you know, when we're focused on the, the earthly, the I'm not comfortable doing that because what will people say about me or what will people think of me or maybe I'll make a mistake, maybe I won't be able to answer someone's question. We focus on the, on the me and it's all about what, why I can't do it and what would happen and, and we fail to realize because we've got our eyes off the Lord and we fail to realize that this is the blessing of God. You know, God didn't have to, you, doesn't have to use us to get saved, to, to, um, to see other people saved. The Lord doesn't have to use us to be a witness. He has chosen to use his children to be a witness for him. That is a privilege. He could have chosen angels. He could have chosen to write the message of the gospel in the clouds. Everyone could see it. But he hasn't. He said, I want, I want my children, the believers, to go into all the world, to open their mouths and speak on my behalf. That is a privilege of the calling of God rather than a, a burden and a, an uncomfortableness that it's like, God, why do you have to do this? No, it's, it's a blessing of God. It's something to be thankful for. It's something to, to take hold of. You know, the Lord has called all of us as Christians, if you're saved, the Lord has called us to a life of holiness. God is holy. He is to be praised for his holiness. He has called us to a life that, as ambassadors for Jesus Christ, not just are we to open our mouths for him, we are to live a life that reflects his, his glory, that reflects his holiness. You know, that is the blessing of God. That God would call us to lay aside the, the carnality, lay aside the, the sin that maybe you were involved in before you got saved, to put it aside so that you can reflect Christ in you. That people can see Christ in you. That is a, that is a blessing. You see, if we're focused on a ourselves and our fleshly attitude you know what we'll, we'll say when God says I want you to to walk with me I want you to live a, a holy life a clean life you know if we're looking at it from ourselves and our carnal fleshly attitude you know what we'll say well that's such a burden God doesn't want me to do this thing that I want to do and God God won't allow me to do this and what God won't 
is all about, it feels like God is, God is making our life miserable. God doesn't want us to do, that's not at all. The Lord wants to bless us. The Lord wants to give us a li- an abundant life, a life that is so far beyond the life you used to live, a, a life that is so different from the world around us. He tells us not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So there is the blessing of God's call. God has so many calls in our life, but each one of those, no matter what it is, no matter how uncomfortable we might feel about God's call in our life, we need to recognize that you know, they, that is the blessing of God. Anything God would call us to is a privilege that we don't deserve. Number two, secondly, second blessing that we can look for and see. Number two is, the, is blessing in God's grace. There is a blessing in the grace of God. Look in chapter 16. So we're going to go on a little bit through the life of Abraham and see another one. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says now, Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. So Abraham, as he walked with the Lord, was certainly was not perfect. He was a sinner. You know, he and his wife Sarah made some very bad decisions for for their family. Here's one of those decisions in verse number two, where Abraham said, "Behold, God hath re- the Lord hath restrained me from bearing." Sarah said. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. So Sarah looked and she said, God has stopped me from having children. So I'm going to work around God and try and make work things out myself. So they get ahead of it. They have the promise of God of descendants. They have the promise of God that they will have they will have family, they will have seed, but they don't see it happening. And they decide to take things into their own hands. And Abraham agrees and Abraham listens to his his wife and they they go ahead and you know what they create? They create a big mess in their family. Where they take Hagar from Egypt. They'd gotten because they'd gone down there, wanted to sojourn there. She ends up being the surrogate mother for Sarah's to have a child. And you know, so they get ahead of God. They try to work around when God is kind of stopping and God is saying, not yet. They're saying, it can't be not yet. We're going to work things out. And we're, we're going to take things into our own, in our own, um, our own hands. Sarah then regrets it. Look in verse 5. It says, And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into my, thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. So here's, here's a time that's coming of, of strife in the home, of regret, of turmoil. Ishmael is born, and later on then, the Lord, if you look in chapter 21, verse 9 and 10, the Lord keeps his promise. Genesis chapter 21, verse 9, the Bible says, And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking, wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman. And her son, for the son of this bondwoman, shall not be heir with my son, even Isaac. So Isaac has been born. 
Ishmael is there in the family. There's, he's, he's mocking. There's, there's consequences for their decision to go try to get ahead of God. There's tough choices now in the family. Look in verse 11 and 12. It says, And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Abraham has two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. And it is grievous what's going on in the family. Verse 12 then says, And God said unto Abraham, so this is what God says, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. You know what God said? Listen to Sarah this time. They have to go. Hagar, Ishmael, he said, God said, listen to them. They have to go. They have to leave. So there is, there is consequences for them, their sin, for getting ahead of God. So this is a family that is going through so much, so much conflict, so much grief, so much strife. None of this is joyous and victorious. And, but remember through all of this, God is good. And God is still blessing Abraham. Remember the Lord said that he is blessing Abraham. He blessed Abraham in all things. How are we going to see God's blessing through this? Well, you know, God is love and God is merciful and God is just. And you know what? It is, it is a law of God that we reap the consequences of our sin. You know, if there were no consequences for sin, we would live in a very wicked and dangerous world. So there is blessing in God's graciousness because God is gracious with Abraham. He's not done with Abraham. He's not done with Sarah. They've, they've made a mistake. They have gotten ahead of God, but the Lord is gracious towards them. He promised to be with them, and God is keeping his promises. He is faithful. You know, what a blessing, the faithfulness of God. So rather than just looking at, look at all that I'm going through and saying, how could, how could God let me go through this? You know, we can see that it is, you know, God has been gracious to them. Yes, there are consequences for their, for their sin. That is a blessing of God. You see, we, we like consequences for sin when it's not for us <laughs> or it's not for the people that we love or we care for. It is a good thing that there are those consequences. And the Lord is gracious, though. He forgives sin when we, when we repent. He gives Abraham more chances to serve, more chances to repent of that sin and turn back. So Abraham can see the blessings of God, first of all, was in, in his call. Secondly, was God's blessing in his grace. Thirdly, moving on quickly here, is there is blessing in God's promises. Look in chapter 17 then. Chapter 17, verse 15, 16, and 17. So Genesis chapter 17, verse 15, 16, and 17. The Bible says, And God said unto Abram, Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And if you look at one more verse in the next chapter, chapter, four, chapter 18, verse 14, it says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. You know, there is blessing in God's promises. But you know, often with the promises of God, you know what comes with the promises of God? Is waiting for those promises to be fulfilled. We like the promises, but we like to see them fulfilled straight away. In our flesh, we don't often like the, the waiting. 
You know, way back in Genesis 12, where we started 24 years earlier, the Lord had said, I will make of thee a great nation. So they've been waiting and wishing because making a great nation means there's descendants. It means there's children. And they've been waiting and they've been waiting and they've been waiting and they're getting older. And they're wondering, is God going to keep his promises? With those promises comes waiting. And with that waiting, you know, if we're, again, focus, get our eyes off the Lord and we're focused on what God isn't doing, God doesn't seem to be answering. God doesn't seem to be fulfilling that promise. I'm still waiting. You know, with that, when we get our eyes on the, on the waiting and the, you know what comes is doubt. Did I really, did God really say that? Has God forgotten his impatience? God, you're not answering. I need to find a different way for you to, to do this. I need to help God out. Questioning God. Fear. And yet remember through all of that, God is good. If God promises, he is going to fulfill his promise at the very, very best time that there is, and that's God's time. In our impatience, something we want now, we want to be given now, but you know, those of you who are parents, you'll know for sure that you can't give a child everything they want when they want it. They want something, they want it now. You know, you know what, I, I can't just keep giving and giving every exactly when they want. No, they're spoiled. They don't grow up to learn patience. They don't learn the, the, the character of, you know what, I can't have everything just because I want it. How many of us as Christians take that same childish attitude into our Christian walk with the Lord and say, Lord, why can't I have it now? God, you said I can have it. I want it now. The Lord knows if he just keeps giving us when we want it, we never learn to trust. We never learn patience. We never learn to wait on the Lord. James chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, I'll just read it. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You see, so there's blessing in waiting for God. There's blessing in not getting what we want right now. Because the Lord wants us to grow. He wants us to, to trust Him, to grow in our faith. He wants us to be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. He wants us to be content in Him. And we're not going to learn that if we just... He promises and we get. We get, we get straight away, straight away, straight away. There is no growth in that learn in that waiting time, in that waiting process. But praise God, there is blessing in the waiting, but there's also the blessing when those promises are fulfilled. <laughs> when there's no more waiting, when it's done and the Lord fulfills his promise, and we get to see the Lord. So there is God's blessing in his call. We can look for there is God's blessing in his grace. There is God's blessing in his promises. And there is God's blessing, number four. There is blessing in God's judgment. Look in chapter 19, verse 23. Chapter 19, verse 23. I'm going to go quickly here. It says, the Bible says, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. We won't read the whole, read the whole passage for the sake of time. But if you're familiar, you'll know this is the judgment of God on Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, there is a blessing in God's judgment. You know that Abraham did not want God to do this. Abraham pleaded with God. Remember, Lot was in, in Sodom uh, and his family, and Abraham pleaded with God not to destroy it. Abraham bargained with God, 
said, if there's righteous, this many righteous people there, will you, will you um, not destroy it? If we didn't turn that off. Um, did I turn that off? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Abram didn't want that. But there was judgment from the Lord because it was the blessing of God. That the Lord wouldn't allow that wickedness to continue. Aren't you glad that God is a holy God? And that the Lord has judgment. You see, in theory, we understand and we agree that God's judgment is good. Because who would want to live in a world that has no judgment for sin? Who would want to live in a world that has no laws, no jails, no consequence for someone breaks into your home, someone um, kills your, your, your child, your family member, your wife, and there's no consequence? Who, who would want to live in a, la- in a world like that? So we see judgment as a blessing when it suits us. God, judge, it is a blessing that crimes are judged. It is a blessing that sin is judged. Who would want to have the promise of eternity in heaven and heaven was a place of sin? Would you like to spend eternity in heaven and it's a place that's just like here? A place of sin? Well, if we want heaven to be what heaven is, heaven is a place of holiness, a place where there is No more death, no more pain. Those former things are passed away. Well, there have to be judgment on sin. It is the blessing of God that God judges judges sin. Why? Because God is good. And we don't like God's judgment when it impacts us. We don't like God's judgment when it impacts people we love. God's judgment is necessary for sin to be dealt with. Again, if you're here and you have never dealt with your sin, you've never turned to Jesus Christ and allowed his death, his burial, and his resurrection to be the payment for your sin, It is the blessing of God that God still judges sin. You have the blessing of God, the opportunity to judge your own sin and to say, according to the Lord, I am guilty before God. And I need the payment for my sin of Christ's blood. I need to trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. If you've never yet done that, it is the blessing of God that you can receive salvation today. Let me finally finish up number five. There is a blessing in God's trials. A blessing in God's trials. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, 2, and 3. The Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto Abraham, And he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abram rose up early in the morning and saddled an ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for a burnt the burnt offering. And rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Again, in our flesh, I don't think any of us could go through something like this that Abram had to go through and think, this is the blessing of God. God is asking me to give of my only of my son. God is asking me to sacrifice, be willing to sacrifice my son. I don't think in our flesh we'd be looking, oh, thank you, God, for this blessing. You know, there'd be fear, doubt, dismay, maybe anger. And yet we can look back in hindsight at Abraham's life and see how God blessed Abraham. How the Lord was giving, through this trial, the Lord was allowing Abraham to get closer to God. 
to trust in the Lord, to give him that opportunity to to show how much he trusted God. And Abraham did. And we can look back and say, what a blessing that was for Abraham. You know, Abraham got to realize that God himself would go through something like that. That God would allow his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come to this world and to die for our sins. The Lord allowed Abraham to go through this trial. And we can look back and see, you know what, that was a blessing. How many trials have you been through over the years, maybe if you've walked with the Lord for a long time, and you can look back and say, you know what, now I see the blessing. Now I see how God worked. Now I see how the Lord helped me. He increased my faith as I I stuck with him through that trial. You know, that God that was so good through that trial is the same God that's so good through the maybe the trial you're going through right now. Or maybe the trial that's awaiting you in this coming week that you, we don't even know yet. Because God is good. Because the Lord's blessing is even in those, in those trials. You see, it's so easy to get our minds off, our eyes off the Lord and forget that the Bible says in Genesis 24, 1, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. He blessed Abraham in everything. And you know, the Lord, if you are, you know, the Lord might be blessing you in the things that you don't see are a blessing right now. Now let's trust the Lord. Let's trust that he's got things in the control, that he is good. And even when I don't see it, maybe right now, God is blessing. So let's pray.